Another day. Getting closer to the playoffs. Um, okay, Bro, so can I, can I just say this before yeah, yeah. anything else? I just want to be like, um, fuck the Bucks. And I want to say why is because Chet and Shay have this new commercial, right? If you guys haven't seen it, check out this new Shay and Chet commercial. It's pretty baller. And the Bucks after the game, they trolled Shay and Chet, right? Just fucking with them, bro. And I got to say this, man. I hope on everything that somehow they beat the Celtics and they think that they're going to crush the shit out of us in the, in the championship game and we get to play them in the championship game and we beat them in four games and make Giannis cry. Man, that would be the greatest thing ever, dude. If we watch Giannis and his brothers sitting on the baseline just sitting on the baseline crying. I mean, dude, that would be the greatest thing I could ever imagine at this moment, dude. Fuck the Bucks. Fuck, the Bucks. Fuck that so, whole hole. I didn't see damage. the troll. I'm going to check it up as soon as I get off here with you. But Got to wow. check it out, guys. So this loss plays like big time into the narrative that, well, the Thunder aren't ready for uh, playoff level basketball. Doc Rivers came in. You know, he gave the Thunder a look of the type of defense and the way that you know, shots get tough in the playoffs and they made it so it wasn't going to be a wide open free flowing game, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, um, I think mm. I heard somebody say that um, this is the blueprint to beat the thunder. I'm like, yeah, okay, here's the blueprint to beat the th- thunder, right? Hold Shea under 20 points. Okay. And in doing that, make sure <laughs> Shet go, Shet goes one for 10. Um, okay. Yeah. If you can do those things, you're probably going to have a pretty good shot. But in the end, like the reality of it, is it's not that simple. And some teams can have a good game and we can have a bad an off night. Those things can coincide. But playoff basketball is not about one game. So right. It's about adjustments. It's about seven game series. Ever since they got rid of the first round being a five game series, like every game, everything is a seven game series. And these seven game series go back and forth. And a lot of people question whether or not the Thunder are going to be able to make the types of in game or post game adjustments you know, to win in a seven game series, Dave. So why don't you respond to that? I just, I, I, again, I think the thunder and we witnessed the thunder having its worst game of the season for Shea and Chet and a lot of the other players. I mean, Josh had a phenomenal game, um, but everybody else just kind of, I, it was so hard to watch. I'm sorry. It just was, it was just, it was painful, especially <laughs> in that fourth quarter. I, I, for me, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm saying like this, is that um, everyone has an ugly sibling. You know what I'm saying? And like everyone is like, man, I got a hot sibling. I got an ugly sibling, right? So um, the other night, we, 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 we brought our ugly sibling to a, a blind date and the blind date left before uh, we could do anything. So um, that's what happened, man. We, we, just, we just did not come ready. Um, and, um, that's just going to happen throughout the season. So the bucks won congratulations, but I think any team in the league would have beat us the way we played the other night. And that's just being honest. Like, did the bucks embarrass us? Sure. Sure. Okay, but, but we're not done lessons? spanking him. We'll come back. Um, I, I want to take a positive note before we go on anymore right, about right. this bucks thing. All right, man, I got yeah, to throw this out here, dude. Go um, ahead. the other day, dude, we got, we got trashed, um, again, for on a couple comments and you know, that's just the way it goes. And we kind of, we were laughing about it, but the other day we have two people that jumped up on the Apple podcast, and I want to give a huge shout out to these guys. Uh, first is Abraham H. Kalim. I'm going to butcher these, and uh, that's okay. Although they may be a little inconsistent, this that's is us. one of my favorite Thunder podcasts. I want to say you're absolutely right. We've been inconsistent since uh, uh, January. Um, that's on us. We will get back there. But we, for two and a half seasons, we did not miss a single day, or we did not miss back to back days. So that's not that's not normal for us. This isn't normal for us. But we will get back. Um, and then the other one is Joshua something. Anyways, uh, this podcast is great for haters to spend so much time reviewing it negatively. Is a sign that these guys are a problem for the normal narrative. They were laughed at for positive view in 2003 or 2023 and 2024 season. And now look how much they were right. Kudos on a pro Thunder th- um, podcast. Now, 
that's kind of feeling like I'm tooting my own horn there. But I just want to say, like, we just are really appreciative when people take time to to write a review, um, whether it's, it's a shitty review or it's a good review. We don't give a shit. We just appreciate when people take the time to let us know how, how we're doing. And on Apple, that one seems to have a really horrible rating of us of 2.6 out of 5 stars. Um, 96 ratings. <laughs> It's horrible, Do you know why guys. it's 2.6? I'll tell you why it's 2.6. That. that was our fault. The reason it's as high as 2.6 is because to leave a review, you have to give somebody one star. Because if they could give us zero stars, then it would be like <laughs> under under that. But they have to give us one star, so that's why it's as high as 2.6. Um, and trust me, uh, people have said, said some anyways, pretty funny things about it. We appreciate it. But I do want to say, like like you said, we didn't miss back-to-back days. But Dave, you moved from Hawaii to um, Washington, D.C. area. And like you said, we didn't miss days. So it took some pretty extraordinary circumstances for us to have to miss some days. And Dave was the glue hanging sure. things, you know, keeping things going. And I was the one flaking, but we're figuring out our schedule. I'm in a new area and we're getting all the internet and things like that worked out. But we'll be back. Just trying to connect, guys. We will be the, the level of consistency that we used to be once again. Um, but it's been a fun ride. It's incredible time to watch like right now it looks like the nuggets might be stepping away the first place um and shay it seems like his hopes that mvp were tied to that it's not going to be something that we think we're going to see we've had a lot of conversations about chet and the uh, rookie of the year that looks like that's being run away with in a different direction so i hope people understand that um Fuck these the awards come with curses a lot of times you know like very rarely is the guy who wins mvp does he go on to win the championship even though they're the favorite going into the you know sure. into the playoffs or something like that a lot of times so i would prefer that curse to be on somebody else and we'll take the number two seed going into hmm. um the playoffs if that's how it's handed to us and we'll come out of that side of the west yeah you know and we'll play whoever can make it out of the, the other side and i think you assume it would be the nuggets um but um, how, what are the chances, though, that the, the Timberwolves keep it going right now and we end up at the three seed? But really, it doesn't matter, right? Because, like, the two and three, um, okay. well, you let's just, the let's just talk, bracket. Let's just talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about where we would land if we were one through three. All right. If we are number one, then we'll p- most likely play against um, Houston, Golden State, Los Angeles, Phoenix, or Dallas. All right. Now, let me tell you. Range. Ready? If we're number two, we're most likely going to play against Golden State, Houston, Los Angeles, Phoenix, or Dallas. Oh, and let me give you this. If we're ranked number three, you guys getting it yet? We're going to play most likely Golden State, Houston, Los Angeles, Lakers, Phoenix, or Dallas. Even Sacramento throw them in there. I mean, fuck it. Yeah. L.A. Clippers are falling back pretty quickly, too. Well, I mean, There's like the Clippers, no guarantee who we're going to end up playing. The Kings and the Mavs are tied. So, so, like, so it's literally... all about just playing. Yeah, it's just about playing. So uh, there's no dictating, but the key is if you end up with the one or the two seed, you end up with home court advantage um, more often. You end up for a couple rounds. If you end up with the one seed, obviously you hold it throughout um, the the Western Conference playoffs. So um, obviously there's an advantage to that. We play better at home, especially but, but being here's young the thing team. though. Yeah would would you rather play as a, the second round play? Right? Would you rather play a Minnesota team as the three seed or two seed? Right? Or would you rather play the Clippers, Pelicans, Dallas, Phoenix, whoever is going to end up being that that four seed, that five seed? You know, because they the four and five seed play against each other. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, like where would we rather? I, to me, second round game, second round team I'd rather play would be Minnesota. Because there's no guarantee that Minnesota will even get out of the first round if they have to play against Golden State or Los Angeles Lakers, you know? So this is a it's so a crazy time where you put can't, you don't really Minnesota have any, with us. Second there's round no targeting teams right now. Like you don't know who you're gonna get. You no. want to get home court as, as long as you can under those circumstances. Um, I wouldn't want to play the Kings in the first round. Um, I wouldn't want to play um, the Timberwolves. I wouldn't want to play us. I wouldn't want to play the Nuggets. And I think. That's kind of like some teams might be like, oh, I'd prefer to play the Timberwolves because they're unproven than the Nuggets, and that's fine. But those teams are probably going to get beat by whoever they pretend like they want to match up against anyway. Um, There are some teams like the Clippers that you think could end up Minnesota plays against. Go ahead. 
Well, let, let's talk about this. Let's just say season ended right now. You've got Minnesota versus Sacramento. Who wins? I like Sacramento in this one, but we we we're, we're notorious right. like for Dallas how versus much okay. We give the Timberwolves a bad time, but yeah, I mean, I think Sacramento has has what I'd want in that game. All right, so Dallas ends up playing. Let's say Dallas ends up playing Phoenix in that first play-in, right? Who wins that game? Oh, Phoenix. Let's just say Phoenix beats Dallas in that game. All right, so we have to play against Phoenix in the first round. How do you feel about that? I feel fine about that. I think there's all right strengths that Phoenix has that will play better against different teams, but we have the the guard defenders. I mean. You're going to have to beat them four games. It's not going to be easy, but yeah, we could do that so, in six. Here's my hot prediction. Dallas loses to Phoenix in the first playing game. They end up having to play against Los Angeles Lakers, Golden State, or Houston. I say Dallas loses the second time in a row this close to the playoffs, and Luka doesn't get a, a chance to go to the playoffs again. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's, it's realistic. Although, Out of all these teams, I feel like Dallas is the weakest. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about momentum, and they're playing really well right now. So, is, so are the Rockets. Um, short series, especially, you think you want the best player, and Luke is that best player. But, yeah, I mean, I like the narrative of, like, sure. Luca like, having to sit out while everybody else is playing in the playoffs and, like, feeling like he's missing out. Um, it's going to wear on him and he's going to be looking for greener pastures sooner than later if he keeps missing the playoffs. Um, but yeah, who, who knows? The Warriors could slip out of the playoffs. Um, but even having a chance at the play in right now, um, dude, there's it's half crazy. A game. Half, half a game. game ahead of Houston. Houston wasn't supposed to dude, break. Do you know this who's way. had the best? Um... No, they weren't, dude. Guess who's had the best 10 game splits in the last um, 10 games? All right, you ready for this? Boston Celtics, 9-1. and one. Denver, 9-1. And, and the Houston Rockets, 9-1. and one. That's nah. crazy, bro. They were tied with Utah a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. How about the Rockets losing after being up like double, <laughs> up by 30? Like, that, that's crazy. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, the Celtics. So the Celtics. Good times. What do you think about the Celtics? Um like, obviously, they're at the point where they're championship or bust. And do you think that that's like that's a good spot for them to be in? I think I I tend to think that this, this type of spot can a lot of times lead to um, negativity. Um, the Celtics are in trouble, bro. I I'll be honest with you. Like, if they're if they don't win this year, yeah, they have to they have to reassess everything they have to decide um is is tatum that guy is Jalen brown that guy is you know our coaching staff those guys like they've got to reassess everything because they cannot turn into another utah team that has to go up against michael jordan five times or whatever you know like they, they can't do that they can't turn into the buffalo bills in the 90s they whatever they can they they have to turn it around and if the celtics don't win it this year they've got to I mean, I, I would have said bring in Doc Rivers again because he'll figure it out. But obviously, they're in trouble. Um, but if I were them and they don't win, then I'm looking at um, possibly trading one of my my two best players to see if I can find a better matchup um, for what I need for the future. Because, I mean, they're going to get stuck behind the Oklahoma City Thunder for the next decade or, you know, another team that's that's young team if they don't figure it out. Because, I mean... They're going to win 60 plus games this year, bro. And they look filthy. They do. And I wonder, though, like getting out of that Eastern Conference may not even be something that happens. Like that would be really embarrassing for them. And I get like, I get it. But you see a Milwaukee team that's starting to get going. And you think about the matchup problems that Milwaukee can provide because of the, like, the positional <laughs> elements of their stars. And you're like, well, you know, I get that, man. You know, two forwards are great, but having a um, you're right. 
a power forward slash center in Giannis and a point guard slash shooting guard in Dame, plus the shooting you get on the wings and the centers and stuff. Sure. Like it's there's no guarantees, but what happens in a city like Boston is if people expect the finals and you don't get there, then all of a sudden just people just start dumping on you and everybody's trash and the whole thing is a terrible experiment and you know it all fucked up when they trusted Danny Ainge in the first place and now they need a clean house and it's like you guys were you guys had one sixty games and you like, you're you're acting like babies but that's how it works in Boston um, yeah. and I think that's how it works in L A um, but I just you know, I look at I look at this this team though that we have in, in the Oklahoma City Thunder and and seeing how we match up against these other teams, especially in the East. And if I was the East, I would be scared. I'd be like, listen, we're, we not, might not get a chance to win a championship in the East for the ne- next decade because some of these West teams are starting to look really, really good. Um, that's what I would be feeling right now. And and I'm looking at this and I and I'm saying, um, what what is the Oklahoma City Thunder's biggest weakness right now? We're we're one of the best defensive teams. But what do you think our biggest weakness is? And I'm going to tell you right now. Because our biggest weakness is, and I, and I look at a lot of the different stats, and I say defensive rebounds is obviously something we need help with. Um, but really, I think that we give up two buckets too much every game. All right? We're, we're averaging our defense. Um, our defense is holding teams to 113 points a game, right? I would love to see that under 110 when we get to the playoffs. I just would. If we can get holding teams unto, under 110 points a game into the playoffs, this team is going to destroy motherfuckers. If we have a, an opportunity not to get to that 110, because I know any given night that we can put up 125 points. And if we can put away teams quickly right, and efficiently, and we don't have to sit there in the fourth quarter and wonder if this team is going to blow another lead or anything else like that, then we're in really, really good shape. But during the playoffs, I need to see this team step up the defense. I'm not going to call it the greatest weakness, but I'm going to say that under 110 points is going to be a key to be able to win a championship this year. You know, a lot of holding um, teams under 110. Yeah, a lot of um, focus has been play, paid to the lack of defensive rebounding. Um, I've heard Coach say that it's something that they kind of focus on managing um, their that as a problem, but they're willing to deal with it. If you watch what this team does – as far as like um, takeaways in, tr- in transition, I think they look at that as a way to make up for a uh, lack of defensive rebounding. So we do a good job getting out in transition sure. and we do sure. score quite a bit whenever we do that. It, the question you know, comes mm-hmm. down to in a big way, if it's not defensive rebounding, where do those stops come from, Dave? Like how is it? Sure. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Is it, is it rotational or um, is it tighter? assignments or what I mean, are better scouting reports over games or what because I mean, four points doesn't sound here, like a here's lot the thing that that much, I, I think that I'm, I'm, it's it's two buckets right and, and here's the thing about it is that um i'm looking at it like this is that the way that coach needs to step this up and, I, and, and he's done it day in and day out after this right and and i want to say that he's probably the best coach at this in the league if you watch the last minute of every single quarter all right I want to say 50% of the time in the last minute, right? We get some type of steal, some type of massive deflection. So for me, that's where the, the, the step up has to happen, right? And let's just say that coach finds a way to get that, that minute to extend it to a minute and 20 seconds or a minute and a half. That's where we get the extra buckets. You know, that's where we get the extra steal. So for me, it's like, yes, coach is doing a perfect job. I'm, I'm not changing anything, right? I don't want to see anything change. I'm just saying is that that last minute of the game, um, of every single quarter that we play defense, once we get to the playoffs, I truly believe that that's going to be extended. He's going to find a way to extend that minute and make it into the last minute and a half. And I think we'll hold a lot of teams to like under, you know, under four buckets. And then, you know, that, that crunch time in the entire game. And if we can do that, it's over. I like, I mean, Obviously, we're at that point right now where people are like, you got to prove it. And we have to prove it against, you know, our key teams no matter what. And that's what we want. You know, like we want to go through this. We want to face um, the best teams that we can each time because, you know, we're not afraid of Dallas or even Sacramento, who has been a hell of a game for us every single time over the last few years. Um, I know that that would be the type of series that would really make us stronger. And 
we saw the previous versions of the Thunder go against those trials. And for a little while, it seemed like the Grizzlies would be up there to be one of those teams that we could go head to head with. Um, they're not there anymore, but in the past, like that was some of the best series I've ever, you know, felt like I was a part of. Um, we saw the Lakers, um, sure. we saw the Mavericks, we saw the Spurs, you know, that was the, um, cast of mm. characters that were relevant back then when we were, um, so I'm excited. Um, right now, um, we're getting ready for the future rivalries that we're going to look back and, and really will define this this generation of this team. And it's exciting because these teams that we're going up against, they're good. They're good, and we want to beat the best. We don't want people to be like, yeah. oh, yeah, well, we face some like weaker version of the Nuggets. Like We want people to be like, this is a historically good Nuggets team that was the best team in the world last year, and we beat them healthy to take the crown. And that's what we're going to do. I honestly think we're going to make this run. It doesn't matter what position we're in for the playoffs. Um, They'll figure it out as the playoffs go, but we're the team to beat in the West. I know that people think it's other teams and stuff like that. Just wait till bro. the Timberwolves get down in a series and see what they're made of. You know, wait till you start realizing that Jokic has been playing for like 28 months straight or something like that, and it's wearing on him. Like we're gonna see cracks in this, in this, and all, and it's gonna be just at the right time. And this transition, people keep talking about the old NBA passing it to the young NBA, they're not ready for it to happen now, but it's about to happen. And we can see some things start to come alive, like Josh Giddy's game. Like, I know it was an ass kicking, but um, what he put up as, as far as numbers were really impressive in this last game against Milwaukee. And it, it says to me, like, you will never get tired of somebody who can go out there and facilitate at that level and keep the ball moving from side to side, rebound at a high level, you know, and score when the opportunities are there. But it's all coming together for him, and he's the type of performer in the playoffs that when people look back, they'll be like, why did we think all these things about them? And they'll be like, just realize it's because they're biased. It wasn't, didn't really have anything to do with his actual game. Um, everybody goes through adjustments, especially when their role is adjusting. But his perseverance is a testament to, you know, just everybody that's invested in him and his overall character as a person. And we're seeing him come alive. And, you know, I, what happens when he goes out in an elimination game and puts up a 30 point triple double, you know, like, like that's, that's what, that's, what's going to happen. It's and the whole world's going to watch it. And they're going to be like, why do we trust these fake experts whenever they said he sucked because they're biased and we got to make our own decisions yeah. based on what we see ourselves. You're and right. it takes a little time for some players, but like, isn't it ridiculous how young he is and people have already like seemed to given up on his game when he's already been able to play at a level that's yeah, unimaginable for most kids his age. So I'm good, man. I got that rant out of me, but well, that's how I feel. Let's let's just say it right now. 18. All right. 18 guys. 18, 18, 18. 18 points. Is, this is going to be the last time. In two decades, all right, guys, the last time or the next two decades, the majority of the next two decades that we're going to see Chet and Shea combined for 18 points. All right, guys, that's prediction right there. We're not going to see that again for a very long time until the very end of their careers. And then we start seeing them not play as much and all that other stuff. But combined for 18 points, we're not going to see this again. This is once in a lifetime right here. And I want to say Bucks did a hell of a job. But fuck yeah. you, Bucks. Fuck you, San Antonio. I want to say fuck you Dallas about fuck that you, Sacramento fuck you Golden State fuck you Lakers I, what I think happened coming into this right if, if you guys I, I never let's say listen to Bill Simmons but if you get a chance listen to Bill Simmons talking to Doc Rivers about Shea and I think Doc came in and I feel like he actually was like I'm gonna give Shea a gift I love that guy I'm gonna give him a gift I'm gonna give him a playoff scouting report and I'm gonna give him the toughest defense he's seen all year as a gift to him. So he knows what it's going to take in the playoffs when he's in the West, because frankly, they've kind of convinced themselves they wouldn't mind if we emerged from the West. So this defense is going to leave yeah. Shea sitting there watching the film and being like, yeah, man, you're going to see all, I mean, when you watch it, dude, it's like, it was, uh, they, they, they went to a heavy switch, like any half screen they were switching. And everything was switched. It was like super, it was a, it was a matchup zone with switches everywhere and people were flying around. It was like, but they, what we found was like, they never were really out of position. And that left us in a spot where 
like the whole game we were kind of like you know we were keeping close until the second half but at some point um they just turned off the spigot and that's what happens in the playoffs man and like how you respond to those environments how you mm-hmm. make adjustments in games and stuff like that so we got the film to study thank you to the bucks you can go fuck yourself now um but i know how much respect doc rivers has for Shea, um based on that interview and i feel like we get to see that in action in this game and so it's a little, a little master class on um, playoff basketball And we're not going to see Chris Middleton do a, have a triple double on us again. Um, let's just be honest. So um, the Bucks had some of their best games. Um, players have their best games of their career against us the other night. Um, I was wrong. Interruption on that one. Fourth quarter, we played decent. It was the third quarter. We only scored 17 points. Um, yeah. Got to get that correction in there. My well, bad. It, um, I, mean, I, I really want to say this. Yeah, it's I mean, we're just trying to play catch up ball at that point, which is, you know, we still yeah, got... But- yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. gap of like where I think um, they scored like but, 20 unanswered points or something like that in the third. It was crazy. We, we as, as Thunder fans, we've seen this a lot. We've seen a 20 plus point loss a lot in the last uh, three years. So for us, this is no big deal. Um, Coach has always done a phenomenal job um, after getting our asses handed to us, getting us back focused and in the um, gym, making sure we, we are ready to go. I don't Dude, see us that- going 10 for 43. Um, on yeah. three pointers in the future, that was in, disgusting on every single angle. And that, listen, I'm not saying that to be a, a diss to any of our players. That just is. We had guys that go one for seven. We had guys go zero for five. You know, zero for three, zero for one, four. Like, listen, it, we had really bad shooting night against the Bucks. I, you know, I'm wondering if we got in late. I don't know what the fuck went on, but I'm starting to wonder if there is more at play than than what we realized. But I mean, you made a good point because, like. Coach D, like this isn't a, a skill that anybody like measures, but like being resilient in the face of a of a bad loss, he's the best in the league right now. Like there was a definite situation where we best. lost by more than anybody else in the league, and you and I spent just a lot of time talking about how incredibly proud we were of the the team for their demeanor. Like I've been in environments where you were you know, just up against a team that had more talent than you or you're outclassed, like how you handle yourself, uh, how you turn on each other in those environments, uh, your body language and all that stuff. It says a <laughs> lot about the direction you're going in. So, yeah, like this is Absolutely. this isn't even even a speed bump. You know, when you've got 82 games in a season, you got to just like, yeah, you, you you learn your lessons and then you move on to the next game. But as we do that, like this next stretch is tough. Like this is this is the tough stretch yeah, that really we didn't is. have over the last month where we were, you know, we had some games against playoff teams, but, you know, a lot of non-playoff teams. Like, what's coming up next is playoff team after playoff team after playoff team. So, you know, we're going to stay on our toes. You know, we're still aiming for 60. That number is a little bit like, yeah, right now, but who cares? You know what I mean? Who the fuck cares? This is what's right. happened already this season has been Let's historic from, a, from our team perspective. 12 games. 12 games. There we go. Right numbers there. Pelicans, Rockets, Suns, Knicks, 76ers, Celtics, Pacers, Hornets, Kings, Spurs, Bucks, and Mavericks. We've got yeah. two easy games. Well, I don't, see, you can't, you can't do that. So, because are you counting the Spurs as easy? Because we lost them last time. So there's no way you can count the Spurs as easy. The Hornets... Well, it's like easy to say, like, oh, we, I, I, we should. I was beat talking them. about Mavericks being easy, easy bro. Mavericks. Really? I was talking about Mavericks being. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't count them as easy. Like this. This is. Hey, this is the meat grinder Fuck you, part. Dallas. <laughs> but, but we put our work in. You know what I mean. And now, worst yeah. case scenario sure. for us is you know third place. We would love all the home court games we could get. It'd be great for the economy in Oklahoma City, and all of our friends and family get to go to the games. But in the end. Um, you know, our mission to take over the NBA world, you know, nobody said it was complete after this year. So this is just another step in that direction. And we're yeah. still hoping for first well, place, but who knows? Five. Five games separate us and the Pelicans and Clippers. Um, at this point, you know, I'm not saying that that's a wrap, but as long as it's we go wrap. 500, yeah, um, we we get um, top three in the Eastern Conf or Western <laughs> Eastern Conference Western Conference. So um, to me, that's a win because when we started the season, we said we thought that this team could go top four. Yeah, that um, was 
that was uh, the somebody whole said consensus. proof is in the pudding. So right, they said, hey, top, top four half of yeah. the guaranteed West spots would be good enough. You know, we we got carried away, and we're still carried away because we're still in that spot. We're number two, but like we got to make sure that we don't forget that you know that top four is, is definitely exceeding yeah. um, our expectations for this year, no if, matter what. If we go five hundred, right, man, that means we win six more wins. And we end the season with 55 wins. And I want to say, if that's the case, man, I'm buying you a really nice bottle of wine because you were one of very few people that said this team was going to win 55 games this year. So kudos to you if that's the case. But six more wins, which is 500 the last 12 games, would put us in a position to be 55 wins. So, all right, guys, we appreciate you. And we will see you guys hopefully sooner than later. See you.